Hey guys, what's up? Moto Flight Guy here. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I don't know how this happened, but we're approaching almost a year since I've done a video on the channel, and that's just ridiculous. So, uh, rather than making you guys wait any longer, I figured I would get the camera out and shoot something today. So, I'm just going to take you on a quick little tour of the hangar and maybe give you a couple small updates on what the heck I've been up to. So, roll the intro. So we'll just walk over here and um, I'll take you on a quick little tour of the hangar, show you some of the toys I got in here and talk about a couple of the things I'm working on currently and uh, my future plans for this summer and the flying season. So um, let's just start over here and uh, I'll take you around the hangar. First I got to come over here real quick, turn off my uh, sound system. So I've, I've got a Sirius XM radio in the hangar. I've got a little amplifier and I've got some bookshelf speakers mounted up there because you can't work on airplanes without tunes in the background. So bringing me to the shelf over here, luckily the previous hangar renter had already built this shelf which is pretty handy so I just keep some cleaning supplies down there and a little oil for topping up the airplane when I go fly. My cordless drill because there's outlets here so I can charge my cordless drill and my phone and stuff like that and then uh, the Sirius satellite radio and then this is a power supply that is feeding this old ham radio so I actually used to be a ham radio operator and I've let my license expire unfortunately I wish I wouldn't have done that but that's an old ham radio and I've got a magnetic mount antenna up on the roof of the hangar and I just use that to scan some of the uh, air band frequencies so I know when people are coming in to land at the airport. Coming around here this is the table that I built specifically for the hangar so I used to have a, a smaller round table in here when I first moved in but it wasn't big enough so um, believe it or not this is I got a hold of some old closet doors um, from a remodel house and I sanded it down and stained it and finished it and I just used that as the top and then uh, I used some overpriced two by fours and I just winged it and built this table and bought some uh, bar stools from Amazon. And it works great because this doubles as a work table for, you know, when you're working on the airplane, you've got a very long, nice flat surface to lay stuff out on, which is great, makes a great work table. But then if you keep it cleaned off, uh, it's great for hanging out at the hangar and I have people over here and eat and hang out and stuff like that. So it worked out pretty well and uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Moving over here, I did put this pegboard up because there wasn't a lot of place to store stuff in the hangar. <laughs> so I just uh, put some two by fours up there and put this pegboard up. And that was, that was a big help because as you can see, it's pretty full and I've got a lot of stuff hanging on there and I've got plenty of room to add. Um, worked out nice. And then up here is just some canvas prints of some cool pictures that I've taken uh, since I started flying. That's uh, me flying uh, the trainer airplane that I learned to fly in and that's the actually the first flight, first takeoff there in the tailwind. And that's me and a buddy doing some formation a couple of years ago. I'd actually like to get some more canvas prints and bring bring that around there. In the corner I've just got a cheap little 32 inch TV um, and I'll hotspot with my laptop and we've actually watched some football and stuff out here in the hangar in the fall. And then over here in the corner um, workbench actually got this workbench with the airplane which was nice but it was a little beat up so I pressure washed it painted it up and we got a Harbor Freight vise on it and I put some of uh, this uh, quarter inch hardboard on it just to give it a nice clean surface to work off of cheap uh, LED light there and works good done a lot of a lot of work on the airplane from that workbench there so pretty important to have uh, if you've got an experimental airplane especially an old one you need a good work area and that workbench and this work table is uh, 
perfect for laying stuff out and putting stuff when you tear everything apart. So that's the, that's the left side of the hanger. So coming around the corner, there's my toolbox. It's a Harbor Freight tech cart, four drawer. Um, not bad for the hanger. Uh, I built out a new tool set for out here because I didn't want to rob anything from my house. So that's a, that's a pretty much new set of tools there and I'm still kind of building it out. But the tech cart's not bad. You can roll it over next to the airplane where you're working and have everything readily available. So I do like that. That's a free parts washer that I believe the pump is, is not working on it, but I was gonna repaint that, get the pump going or replace it and have me a good parts washer. Uh, salamander heater. You really can't heat this hanger. It's not insulated. However, when the, in the dead of winter, if you roll that thing over and point it at you when you're working on the airplane, it does take the chill off. So that's nice to have. Those are a free set of cabinets that I got. You would be surprised at the amount of free stuff you get when you hang out at an airport. Uh, people cleaning out their hangers and whatnot, they end up having stuff they don't know what to do with. And if you're hanging around, you can cabbage onto a lot of free stuff. Those are old vintage metal cabinets and they're good for storing paint and flammable stuff like that. So that's what I'm using those for. Um, moving over here, that's a gas uh, propane fire pit. Uh, I've got it on some movable casters there and we just wheel it out in front of the hangar when we're hanging out in the evenings and we have a nice little fire pit to sit around. And there's, there's the gear fairings that are back off the tailwind, but they're gonna be going back on because I think I finally have a good mounting method to keep those uh, on the gear legs and a long-term solution. So I just need to find the time to do some modification of those and those will be going back on the airplane. And moving to the back wall, you gotta have the mandatory American flag. I've got a couple uh, decent shelf racks here that I also got for free. I'm telling you guys, you just hang around an airport long enough, you'll get free stuff. Not much to show you there though, just bunch of junk and bulk bulk storage this is my 2009 versus 650 and as you can tell it is outfitted for adventure riding it's filthy at the moment which is a shame probably gonna sell this bike I have not had the time recently with everything going on to be riding that the way it should be ridden which is unfortunate. I love the motorcycle and I hate to get rid of it, but I'm probably going to be putting that up for sale. However, before I do that, I want to do a long-term review on it because I have had that, I believe, I have to go check, but I believe I bought that in 2014 and I do have 10,000 miles of adventure riding on it. So it's safe to say that I could do uh, an honest long-term review of the the first gen versus for adventure purposes and I do want to put that video out so you know in my 30 seconds of free time maybe I'll get a video up on that bike but right for right now it's probably gonna sit in the corner for a little while longer coming around the corner here's my dirt bike this is a O2 RM 125 I actually took this down to the frame and built it from the frame up I have old footage of that that I never published so if you guys want me to dig that up, comment below and, and let me know if you want to see some of the build footage from that being built from the frame up. Uh, pretty much got all new everything, so I'm not going to get into detail on it, but that's got a 144 big bore motor from Eric Gore Racing. Fantastic woods bike, and as you can see, there's dirt on it because I actually rode it a couple of weeks ago. So. A buddy of mine's got some new property with some new trails and I hope to get some more seat time on that thing this year. So you might be, you might actually be seeing more of the RM on the uh, channel in the near future, hopefully, hopefully, because that means I'm riding it and I do love that motorcycle. I'll probably be buried with that one. And moving around to the right side of the hangar, there is my pit bike. That's a Pitster Pro MX-110 and I'm not a pit bike guy really, as far as like being a pit bike guru so i can't tell you for sure but i want to say this would fall under stock mod class if you raced it uh i'm sure a pit bike guru will chime in the comments and tell me i'm wrong or right or whatever but it is a 110 four-speed semi-automatic so it doesn't have a manual clutch and 
we used to ride these quite a bit several years ago but that thing hasn't been ridden in a, a few years so that one for sure is going up for sale uh, i just need to get the time to clean the car and clean it up that's my harbor freight trailer uh, that i set up for hauling motorcycles i got the gas jug holder on the front of it put some e-track in there and i've got some wheel chocks these these trailers aren't aren't bad for what you pay for them it's pretty nice if you're looking to haul motorcycle or something small around uh highly recommend the harbor freight trailer it's a good platform you can kind of customize it yourself and the reason why i don't ride that thing anymore i used to actually ride it around the airport but i've got the xr1 wheel i've had this since 2019 and if you're at an airport and you don't have a one wheel you don't know what you're missing this thing is so handy for running around the airport and if you need to run across the airport and grab a part or something like that or talk to somebody such a huge time saver and then uh, i actually got this big fan here that i need to do a little work to but it's on wheels that i believe come out of a warehouse or something of the sort out of the wall it's been converted to a floor fan and it is a lifesaver because it it's quiet and it moves a ton of air so you can kind of roll that thing out here point it at the airplane when you're working on it in the summer and works out very very well so what about the tailwind um where are we at on the tailwind so I've got some stuff going on with it right now. There was quite a few maintenance issues. I might have to do a separate video talking about that. Uh, basically went in for a condition inspection in October and due to my availability plus the maintenance issues that we run into plus the weather, didn't get flying until the spring. Uh, however, it's running great. There's some new stuff on there. It's running flying great. It should be ready to rock for the flying season and I'm stoked about that. You can see the landing light lens is off of it. Getting ready to do a new video on that. We're going to upgrade that. You'll see all about that in the next video. But just an update on the tailwind. It is all freshly maintenanced up and you should see some flying videos out of that thing going forward. So there you have it. Quick little tour of the hangar. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And this will not be the last video for 11 months. Look for some content in the near future. We're going to be doing some wrenching on the airplane. We're going to be doing some flying and we're going to be doing some riding as well. So look for some content going forward. I'm happy to be back making some videos for you guys. And as always, I appreciate every single one of you that watches these videos and who's subscribed in the last 12 months, despite me uh not having new content so you guys rock and as always we'll see you guys on the next one